Hello, my name is Nick Wilson and welcome to our webinar today. I'll be facilitating today's webinar focused on how manufacturers can improve operating performance with data analytics, reporting, and visualization. Before we get started, I have a couple housekeeping items to cover. First, the session is being recorded and the download link to the recording will be shared with you afterward. Second, we will have live Q&A with our speaker. To ask a question, please use the chat box feature on your GoToWebinar control panel, usually found at the right of your screen. For any questions we can't get to in our live session, we'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards. Now I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Rich Eiler. Rich is a director at PMG who leads our manufacturing and private equity practice areas. He's a 30 year veteran in operations, IT and project management with extensive experience in things like business process re-engineering, ERP implementations, data quality and strategy, and also acquisition integration. Prior to PMG, he spent nearly 20 years consulting at Capgemini Ernst & Young. Rich, we really appreciate your time today. I'll hand it over to you to take us through the agenda and the content. Rich? Great. Thanks, Nick, for the introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for joining us. During today's webinar, and you can see the title before, we will look at issues manufacturers are dealing with, challenges in building a data analytics strategy, the steps to build a strategy, a case study, and then as Nick mentioned, we'll have an opportunity to address any questions. The great news for manufacturers is there are many sources of data. The downside is how can the organization harness the data that's needed? When developing a data strategy, recognize how the industry dynamics are impacting the business and then adjust the strategy. Not all manufacturers are dealing with these same types of issues that are listed here. These are some examples, but once again, address these based upon your strategy. So harnessing the data and what this does from a competitive advantage standpoint. Our experience shows us in many instances, profit improvement are areas that can actually happen via accurate margins by product and by customer. The correct allocation of costs can be a challenge for most organizations. Identifying waste and reporting on waste. In this instance, is information captured to reduce waste? Is the information provided to engineering to update standards so that new quotes are based on real scrap rates and not what existed three, five, 10 years ago. Is your organization empowering employees? Is the data available to make decisions at the right time and in the right place? From a demand standpoint, does the cycle time meet customer expectations? Do the stocking levels provide the required buffer? And how often are these levels adjusted? From an operational standpoint, does the company produce what was scheduled or does the schedule change to meet customer date and quantity changes? Are the suppliers business partners or are they viewed as vendors? How is the supplier performance measured? What data exists to manage the relationship? And how often does the purchasing area meet with the suppliers in the organization? Now let's look at some of the challenges to deploying a meaningful data and analytics strategy. As many companies have merged, disparate systems remain due to significant replacement and or integration costs. In some cases, the ERP system was not fully implemented, possibly missing the planning, scheduling, and operational mod modules makes it significant issues relative to getting accurate costs. Some companies don't have a data mindset. Therefore, the organization needs to understand they are competing on data as well as offering capabilities such as price and service. Maybe the organization's culture is not focused on having the right data at the right time to make decisions. Data may be stored in numerous locations with limited ability to consolidate. 
in many instances, the product and the data don't move in the same direction at the same time. Possibly owners of the data do not exist. In many instances, the data isn't even accurate. Data elements may have different meanings in different parts of the organization. Internal resources don't know how to use the data to make decisions. Sometimes KPIs either don't exist or they're not supported by the data. Collection points for data are inaccurate or data isn't captured close to the source of the need. A telltale example is significant use of Excel spreadsheets. Lack of exception reporting to identify data issues. Maybe business process procedures either don't exist or they're not up to date and do not include information on what data is to be used to make decisions. Business process owners may not exist and business processes may not even be streamlined. Now, let's take a look at some of the areas to get started to avoid the issues that were just described. The process should start with a vision or strategy to utilize data as a competitive weapon. In this instance, development of the data strategy must align with the business strategy. Development of the data strategy must include participants from the business and IT information technology working together. This cannot be viewed as an IT project. Once again, the organization has to have the data mindset that data is valuable. The culture of the organization needs to be grounded in the use of a single source of truth. No longer can different parts of the organization be allowed to have multiple versions of Excel. You need to identify the KPIs that should be measured to monitor and improve performance. Define the data required to support the KPIs. Define the data security that's required. Identify owners of the data. Then start to clean the data and create exception reports to continue cleansing of the data. Remember, this is an ongoing process. Data deteriorates significantly in a three to five month period. Document how to use the data and reporting to make decisions. We highly encourage establishing meetings where only the data from the core systems are used to report business results, meaning exclude those Excel spreadsheets that do nothing but confuse the different participants. Treat data as a key asset. It's as important as the company's products. Eventually, create dashboards to monitor the business. Remember this, decisions are delayed when confusion exists in an organization. Clarity of the situation provides confidence to make business decisions. The right data at the right time provides that clarity. Now, let's look at some real life examples of data analytics and reporting. Analytics, reporting, and visualization. On the very top, you'll see an executive dashboard. This can be eye candy to an executive, but the basics have to be in place before the dashboard can be useful. Data has to be clean, exception reporting in place to keep it clean, processes defined, procedures in place, and training on how to use the data. Some examples of reporting are identified under the categories we have listed here, sales, customer service, supply chain, operations, and finance. 
also listed on this slide are some of the areas where we have experience in creating these types of reports. You'll see CRM from a Salesforce, Microsoft CRM, SAP, or from ERP systems as the backbone, as well as BI reporting and visualization capabilities, Power BI, Tableau, et cetera. So as you look at the different columns and see from a daily sales reporting, sales analytics, dormant customers, over to at the very far right, cost tracking, margin tracking, et cetera. We're gonna give you some examples of analytics that we've created at customer sites that provided this information to improve the performance of a business. Here's an example of an executive dashboard. You can see the comment to the right hand upper corner. No need to wait until month end closing to know how the company is performing. For this visualization of the executive dashboard, the dashboard covers the following. Number of sales orders entered and previous day sales dollars on month to date sales. Dollars invoiced yesterday and month to date. Yesterday's average invoice margin and month to date margin. Dollar value of orders entered by customer. In this case, this organization's production wanted to be tracked in feet. So production in feet. Purchase order dollar receipts yesterday and month to date. On time delivery yesterday and month to date. Customer credits. Number of items dormant for 90 days. Number and dollar amount of past due orders. Number of cleared past due orders. Sales order backlog in dollars by month and year to date. And past due orders by day and by business unit. Now, when we arrived at this customer's location, many of the issues that were on the previous slides existed. In other words, they did not have the key pieces of their ERP system in place from a production reporting standpoint and from a costing standpoint. When we left, not only was the business being managed by this executive dashboard, this dashboard was available on the CEO's phone. So to move from an, uh, a situation where the systems were in place, the data wasn't clean, to being able to manage my business regardless of where I'm located, a significant transformation. Now let's go to the next slide. On this one is an example of margin tracking. For this area, we looked at quoted margin, target of margin by customer, and order for materials and assets. In this case, it was machines and labor hours. Quoted contribution margin by machine and labor hour. Sales order price per pound, quoted cost of materials per pound. The entire organization that needed to see this data was made available on a daily basis. For this view, it was the sales order backlog. Sales order backlog by month by customer. Invoice versus sales. I'm starting to look at what are the trends that are taking place? What are the companies that are ordering? What companies haven't ordered in what frame time or time frame? So they could drive the sales organization to keep in contact with customers that hadn't ordered in a while so they could compare back to the forecast. Dormant customers and finished goods. So what do I want my sales reps to look at? In this case, by sales rep, I can look at by item 
to drive the customer contact and provide changes to what I thought they were going to buy. In this instance, this drove the sales force to focus on particular customers and items that they expected to be sold that hadn't been sold. So some customers in this organization provided sales forecasts, others a projection of what they thought they might buy. This type of reporting gives the salespeople an opportunity to be proactive and not wait until the next quarter when somebody would ask, well, uh, General Motors didn't buy as much this month as they had last month. Why? What items were there? Being proactive versus being reactive. In this case is a production dashboard. So on this view, we have production in unit of measure desired. What was, the, what was the unit of measure this client wanted versus other clients? In this case, they were looking at production length, in this case, feet. Number of machines operating. What time did those machines actually start operating? What time did the machines end operating? Scheduled versus amount produced. What did we think we were going to make and what did we actually make? Percent setup time, downtime, and scrap yield. The importance of any of these is to feed this information back to the engineering organization. If you believe your setup time is this and it is this plus, obviously what you're quoting to your customers on costing isn't going to be correct and your margins are going to be impacted. Whether it's scrap, uptime, downtime, setup time, all factors that are going to impact your margins. This is a view of daily production by machine center. So what was my actual yield versus my expected compared to what? In this case, it's compared to the bill of material. Once again, feedback to the engineering organization on what are the yields we expect that was built into the quote versus what did we yield? Many organizations we work with, they don't understand what attainment to schedule is. What attainment to schedule is, is planned production by whether you call it a manufacturing order or a work order versus actual production by either that manufacturing order or the work order. So what items did I produce, but I didn't have scheduled? What items did I have scheduled I didn't produce? And why is this important? Schedule changes cost money. Whether it's internal or customer driven changes, there's a cost to set up a machine and or tear down a machine relative to customer changes in dates or quantities. When your production planner or scheduler is looking at planning for the next week, they're trying to put products that are similar in nature to run back to back. And if customer changes in dates or quantities impact that, then, then you're doing another setup or a teardown that's costing the company money. And it's going to impact the margin of the products that you're selling. In this case, we're trying to identify, did you really attain the schedule that you put in place? In many instances, we're driving our customers to have a schedule put in place and remain in place for a week. And then you move to two weeks. Now, it depends on what your lead times are associated with this. And it also depends on whether you allow your customers to make changes without any financial obligations.
In this view, we're looking at machine setup time. What was my setup time versus my run time by work center? Did I spend almost as much time setting it up as I actually ran the machine? An issue. What was my planned setup time versus my actual setup time? Once again, feeding this information back to the engineering organization so standards can be updated. This is an example of scrap reporting. What's my scrap yield by day, month to date by item, quoted versus actual? So what did I think my scrap was going to be based on my standards? And what was my actual scrap? Once again, standards and actual need to be close. Obviously, there are issues with maybe uh, a machine not operating as well as expected, issues with material, but those need to be identified as unique occurrences and not bad standards. So I mentioned this earlier in the presentation, and that was around exception reporting. Remember, cleaning up the data is one aspect. Maintaining accurate data is a con continuous activity. Exception reporting puts in place the ability to manage and review the data accuracy ongoing. So in this case, the action exception reports are used clean the transactional data, such as purchase orders and manufacturing orders that need to be closed? Did we, did we make 90% of what we thought we were going to make? And is that order gonna stay open forever? Did I receive 95% of what I thought I was gonna receive from my supplier? Or is that PO gonna stay open? Why is that an issue? Well, if, if you're really utilizing the system, the system, if, if you've ordered 100 and you received 90 and you don't close the purchase order, the system's gonna think you're gonna continue to have 10 being delivered at that point in time. And if you don't update the system, then when you really do need maybe the next order has a requirement of 50, it believes that you don't need 50, you only need 40 because you still have 10 coming in from your supplier. So the exception reporting captures that information and recommends that those updates be made in the system. Maybe sales orders with prices less than the contract price exist. Maybe manufacturing orders completed with quantity greater than an order. So why am I making more than I should be making? And what happens when I do so? Does it just sit in stock for a period of time? It's a fast moving item. It may not be an issue. If it's something that you make very few times a year, that could be very costly. Or maybe I have expired pricing agreements that I've never captured that. And so I'm, I'm pricing my product based on an agreement that expired six months ago and I sell a commodity that pricing changes weekly, daily, so the exception reporting is absolutely critical to the organization. But putting it in place without leadership driving the conclusion and the closure of these exceptions is absolutely key to any organization. With our customers, we're continuously driving them to drive the number of exceptions down. So you're looking at true exceptions and not data that just isn't taken care of and consequently I can't sort out real issues from static. We also put in exception reporting that we call informational. So these are happen to be transactions that should be reviewed for potential issues. Maybe it's material substitutions that were made. Maybe there are inventory adjustments. 
So they could be transactions that in many instances seem like there's no issue, but somebody needs to look at this from an informational standpoint and figure out, is there an issue here? If so, I need to address it, or, or maybe it really isn't. And you can see in this instance, there aren't a lot of exception items from an informational standpoint, but it's good to look at this information. So how do you, how do you get started in this? Well, we've used the reporting capabilities to create governance plans to drive the use of data to improve operations. So I'll give, let me give you a few examples. So we'll actually drive what we call contract pricing review meetings, where we've defined what's, who's responsible for the review of the pricing contracts what the actual agenda is for that meeting, what artifacts need to exist at that meeting, what the decision authority is, and what the thresholds are. Because when you move from an environment where data isn't clean, it isn't used to make those business decisions, in many instances, people don't know how to use the data to make those decisions. And so putting in place those governance plans to drive the right behavior using the right data at the right time to make those business decisions then helps the organization make that transformation. Other examples include daily margin review sessions. Once again, we're defining what is the agenda, what are the artifacts used, what's the decision-making authority, so you can look and say, are we driving the margins that we desire? And are we looking at the right data and making the right decisions? Another example is a quote review meeting. Let's look at the quotes that we've made and let's make sure the margins that we're quoting and the standards that we're using are correct. If you have the data, then you can go back and look. Yes, the, this standard was updated. Yes, the bill material's been updated. The routers are correct. The, uh, the costs have been updated. They've been allocated correctly. And so all of a sudden, the meetings that existed for hours now exist for 15 or 20 minutes because you have the right data at the right time and the people know how to utilize it to make the business decisions. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Nick to address any questions we may have. Hey, thanks, Rich. As a reminder to everyone on the webinar, you can ask a question via the chat feature of the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side. I do see a couple of quick questions, Rich. Um, so the first one is, what approach has worked well in aligning the organization around a data strategy? Great question. What we typically do with customers is run a, what we call a facilitated session, where we're getting input from across the organization. An earlier comment that was made was around, this is not an IT project, this is a business project. So business and IT people working together. The best way to do that is to get input from across the organization. A facilitated session where issues get surfaced. That's really what you want to happen. Uh, doing individual interviews provides data. It's, consultants have done that for many, many years. Running a, a facilitated session forces people in different parts of the organization that typically may not communicate to communicate and therefore issues come out that in many instances may not have been available to the rest of the organization. In addition to that, you get commitment to the results. And what that means is that the people in the room own the decisions that are made. The issues come out, the discussion happens, decisions are made, they own them. 
We just happen to be the people facilitating them. Right questions at the right time with the right people. All right, thank you, Rich. We do have another question. Once you get started, how can the data strategy effort be sustained? Another good question. So how do I sustain anything in life, whether uh, I'm going on a diet or whatever it happens to be, how do you sustain it? You have to measure it. And that's what the reports and dashboards are all about, capturing that data that then can be viewed, then can be measured, the exception reporting that we show, whether the exception reporting is an exact action exception report or whether it's an informational exception report, measuring it, identifying it, and having people be able to make business decisions off of that data to drive the right behaviors. Then it provides the information that the executives want, the eye candy, which is the dashboards. Thank you, Rich. Those are all of the questions we have in the queue at this point. So Rich, I'll turn it back to you to ask if you have any parting thoughts or comments before we conclude. My comments would be this. We appreciate the opportunity to demonstrate PMG's capabilities. Uh, you have my contact information. I would welcome anyone who wants to reach out to address any company specific questions, be more than happy to address those. Once again, thank you very much for your time and your attention today. Thank you, Rich, and thanks everyone today. We appreciate your time. Hope you found the content valuable and that you have a great afternoon. This wraps up our webinar. Thanks everyone.